Right. So I'm doing a, it's Flotilla Friday. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm taking <laughs> <can you respond? laughs> Um, It's Flotilla Friday on, what day is it? The 21st of January. Did I get that date right? I hope so. And I'm presenting just some, the late, the stuff that's been coming out for me just in the last couple of weeks. And so it's a project I'm calling the Tapestry. And I'm trying to help provide some semblance of a way that we can start um, providing a framework for all the people in all these groups to see each other better and to make connections and find synergies and possibly even more importantly, find holes. Um, so an analogy to a puzzle here. And then, um, so in that framework, I was trying to figure out what can I, um, what am I really trying to do here? And what I'm really, I tried to take the bigger picture, the meta picture first and going, well, we're really trying to elevate people's thinking, really trying to help them sense make, really trying to help see perspective. And that's when I drew this picture. Um, and so for me, this was just an individual's path and quite a few, you've seen this before and um, you've seen me explain it before. So for me, this just was a separate piece, but it started to guide my thinking as I continued. So I'm gonna go keep going for speed. Um, I was looking at, I was talking a lot in conversations with different people about the hierarchy of needs. And I really like the, the first nations perspective better, um, which I think a lot of us feel more akin to, and that we're really, there's, there's a nat, and I realize there's a natural spread in their hierarchy too, where you are focusing on the individual and you're also focusing on, uh, the community and, and ultimate, you know, cultural perpetuity. And so I realized actually there's a lot of projects and a lot of people working in different spheres that it might be a nice way to spread out projects and a, and a way to, you know, put them on a table and kind of spread them out a little bit. If we, if we were to spread out the ones that are focusing on individual growth or individual um, actualization versus ones that are focused on community or organizations or groups. So that was one um, area. And that became my, that ended up kind of holding it, holding weight um, over the long term, and so that became my y-axis. And then the next one was basically um, how there are some people are doing great divergent thinking, and some people are doing great convergent thinking. So another way to say that is some people really exploring into the field, and other people are really making sense of it and applying new concepts in the real world. And so I spread that became my other, and that became my x-axis. And then um, I realized that these pictures started to go together. And that was after the fact, <laughs> that was not by design it originally and realized that if I spun the 2D picture um, of, the, of the yin yang, I, that little path became an infinity symbol. And I started realizing that I basically drawn the same things twice. So it was a nice confirmation from the field for me. Then I decided, okay, I don't think four boxes is enough. It might be nice if we could break it down even more and realized I started gravitating towards the wheel of co-creation because I wanted this to be holistic. I actually not really don't really care about the framework. I think the framework, the words that we use can change. What I wanted was a system that had been thought through that was holistic so that we could see the pieces that we were working on and the pieces that were missing. And so I just gravitated towards that one, but um, quite a few people are working with me on what the on what the terminology could be and whether that's the right one or not. Again, that can evolve to me over time. And so then it comes into um, now what, right? How do we use this thing? And that's the Z axis. And there's um, multiple options for ways way we, we can do um, the Z axis. And these are some of the ones I'm playing with. Um, it, you know, and this is why the tech support is so necessary because the all our problems and all the things we're trying to do and the projects are so complex and they exist really in, in three dimensional cubes, sometimes spirals of things that we can't see it. And I think that's what we're struggling with. So again, having having the layers and having people pe people being able to control the layers, I think are super helpful. So again, I'm trying to move on for, for time. So um the last question really remaining is how do we allow people to put their own piece in to say, this is, this is the segment that I belong in and then allow the whole community to see everyone together in those segments. Um, and so basically um, there's what Vince and I had a nice conversation about it saying, okay, so maybe what we do is we ask people a questionnaire that's a little bit more like their profile 
like, you know, the people are used to being asked their interest and stuff. Maybe there's a way we can guide people into placing their piece instead of looking at the grid. Cause that's super complicated. Let's ha let them walk through a series of questions. Um, and then they, that places their piece, then they can see their piece in the whole if they want to and see it through different layers um however they want to sort it or or layer it or filter it and then if their piece is in the wrong place they get a chance to move it right so that part of the technology i don't think is too much of a stretch from what we already have available to us versus some of the other stuff i'd been working on which was much more of a stretch so to me this starts to have a lot of um, juice and excitement around it because it's enough of a framework we can at least take a step forward or two maybe three but it's not so far ahead of where our technology is that it's 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 going to be another year or two before we have anything so i'm currently trying to work with uh winfinity on this trove seriously app um us and um, Open Future Coalition, there's there's conversations starting to happen about how this could be used. And I'm open to suggestions and I went two minutes over, it's not so bad. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy, that looks really cool. I yeah. one, one thing that occurs to me is I think, I, I love the, the puzzles and the pieces. And I think sometimes we're actually, it's a couple different puzzles with all the pieces mashed together, right? So then you have mm -hmm. to not only find your place in a puzzle, but you have to make sure you're or you have to decide whether or not you're in a puzzle or not. Yeah, and I think that's that's fair. And I think that's why it would be interesting to have the different layers, right? So there could be a layer for, you know, the different puzzles, right? So you could go forever with the layers and then that will get complicated as well. So I think it's why it's important that people will be able to look at it in, in a way that works for them. And that's a big, that that I think is the hardest part of this of this idea is yep. is not placing people in it but then once everyone's in it being able to change it you know it, it could be just going back to their profile changing it and then looking at the whole again it doesn't necessarily have to be in the grid itself although it'd be lovely if people could drag and drop into a different spot um but you know just them being able to change it and then being able to see it in ways that are meaningful to them whether they're the head of a group and they want to see the whole group or they want to see how their piece interacts with other pieces they want to zoom in on one one segment and see where where the potential collaboration points are with other people who are doing similar things or whether they want to look where their holes are and say oh there's someone offering expertise or something that no one's actually doing anything and i need to collaborate with that i mean it raises questions i don't think we can even ask now and i think that's the point of it is what yeah. questions will come from it not what answers Right. So to me, um, and, and to have it not be so chaotic that the questions are meaningless. <laughs> you know? So, right. I got, I got one quick question, but I'm, I feel like I'm a bit of an outlier here on the population. But is there something we could start with? Like, here's two things I had. One, I would love to go through whatever you would propose as a questionnaire to figure out, okay, how do I relate to these things? That might also uncover some, you know, word choices that are being used that people get confused with or, you know. And the second thing is I could see myself being in two places at once just because of multiple pieces of work I'm doing that are only related because, you know, it's the same human doing it. Exactly. Things. No, that's that would be the point. You yeah. would have interests that you could put in. You could have expertise that you could put in. You have projects that you could put in and those could all be in multiple. You get to put yourself in as many spots as you want to. And the way I see it too is almost fractal. Like somebody may just go, oh, I like talking about economics, whatever, I'm done with this whole thing, I'm not interested, <laughs> right? And put their one piece in and whatever. And then other people may go, oh, not only am I interested in, ex I have expertise in this area, I'm working on a project, these are other people I'm working, like here are five suggestions of great resources, here are my leading questions, Here, right? And they're, all their stuff could be in one segment and that's fine, right? So, and then, so it's how it becomes more of a, Right. The, the first step here is to figure out a framework that is even something slightly helpful. And then the next one is how do we show it to people so that it's useful? And what I hear you saying, Bill, too, is like not only can it get complicated, but we want to allow people to drill down so that if there's too much information, they can they can um, they can um, zoom in. The other thing I want to say is that this looks brilliant. And what I want to do is fill out a questionnaire right away because I want to see oh. what it can just it, just get started this is how i got involved with vincent here just yeah, do this it, and you're, you're getting the catalyst so 
No, I, it, it is brilliant. And Wendy, I'm going to screen share because I don't know if you've done it justice compared to like what we, so this is the, um, the questionnaire that Wendy gave me to fill out. And so basically how the, this prototype worked was like, basically there's these different squares with, uh, like Wendy said, the sectors on the left and then the like, basically is so in economics, I have like an interest in talking about new economic systems, but I'm not creating anything that's available for public use that's like in the world being applied. Um, I also have done some experiments with a failed business from Tizetto where I was applying, you know, um, things with economics within um, and like experimenting in the real world with economics. And then like for media, um, right? So like currently available for use is like Trove, um, and I've made like a VR meditation app, which is out on YouTube within like the spirituality sector. And the really cool thing about this is you start to see the gaps. What Wendy was saying is like, you can like, if everyone did this from a group, then you can be like, wait a minute, we have no one applying any of this or we're, we're, no one is doing any research and we're just like building too quickly or none of us are thinking about justice or governance. And so it's interesting when you start overlaying the different maps on top of each other um but yeah this i think kind of answers a few questions about like yeah you can put yourself in multiple different squares in this tapestry which i love the name by the way wendy yes. yeah jonathan sand helped me come up with it we played around with about 20 different words before we were like tapestry and i was like thank god yes <laughs> um and yeah, so I'm happy to share. I actually created a Google form yesterday as a as like a mock up, but it's it really needs like Vincent's help or someone, right? Because a Google form is just too long. It, it's too cumbersome. You really want to be able to people to answer some initial questions and based on their initial answers, pop up other sections because you know, and then it makes it feel. I could tell already it may, it would make it feel um, easy. And, but if I were to lay it all out, every option of every question that you're going to answer, it's like, so you want it to be sequential, like a, you know, type, um, type form. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and, so and people don't, name, um, so yeah, like conditional, right? If you've said yes to this, then we open up this question. Right. But there's, there's a, there's a company that does these sort of like question at a time things that you, um, I think it's called type form or um, that is ubiquitous. Um, I'll, I'll find it if that's not it, but um, yeah, it could be really good. Um, and then the, the questionnaire too puts us in a space of asking where are people coming from when they talk about themselves, not what grid do we have and forcing them to figure out what the structure of our grid is and how making them understand what the different sectors are. So I want to really bring people in from a perspective of, you know, what is it you want to share with this group? Not, not do you, what areas do you talk about economy governance? Like I want to get to that later. That should be like the third or fourth question, not the first one in, in, in my opinion, because that's not how people generally think or talk about themselves um, unless they know they have an expertise in an area. So I think trying to also guide people to it so that it feels more fun and easy to answer. Okay. So and that there's a lot of you're... yes, instead of like, I don't know what I do. It's not really this. It's not really that. Uh, I don't want to do this, you know, so. so. Let me know as soon as you have something I can fill out because I really want to try this because I know I'll learn something about myself and it might be helpful. Sure. Because I'll just share one heresy I came up with that I documented years ago was, and I should have known it 20 years ago when I was interviewing for a job and somebody said, what's your passion? And you know what? I had no idea how to answer the question because in my head goes like, this is like an irrelevant question to me. We're talking about doing this piece of work, you know, and I, started, I feel the same way about your superpower, you know. I have none. I like so those things need context to be useful. But I think what you're doing, I mean, I just want to like let's see what can happen. And I would encourage yeah. you just move as fast as you feel you can to get <laughs> something into the hands of us so we can actually make it better. Do not overthink this. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you for the encouragement. This has been already a sprint. I'm up until about two o'clock every morning 
because I'm so excited about it, trying to put as much time as I can into it. So your encouragement is helpful, especially at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, no, it's, I mean, it's just some software, you know, there's a, people still don't do this, but they, you know, one of the things when I was building software at Xerox, we did with a customer was we just put basically the, the a pale imitation of some kind of a system into their lab at, before it was even ready. And the thing it made them do is to figure out, oh my God, we're going to have a computer in here. What, you know, where's that going to go? So I mean, we really moved fast. Yeah. Which means, you know, you get to choose the most important things. And a lot of things fall aside that may not actually be that important to keep going. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So can help overthink yourself. Really. I, I do it myself. Yeah. So help me out. You would love to have a a questionnaire to fill out that gives well, you show me the tapestry and the three-dimensional chart i'm like great well i would like to figure out can i answer this honestly and where would that put me yeah or so i could represent... hand you now the spreadsheet that i gave to vincent and you could fill it out yeah i mean i'm i'm trying to figure out how can i help you this is how i think i could help you yeah so let's so... do that i'll share the spreadsheet right um, I'll share a PDF of it because I don't, we can't really co collaborate on it. I don't think that's right. I'm we put it on Google drive. Would that get too messy if I put it on Google drive and everybody. You should do what's easiest for you. If it's a PDF, I'm going to use preview and type into it because my handwriting is terrible. So I'm, you know, I'm just going to end up editing the, editing the typing stuff into the PDF and sending it back to you. Yeah, I would just hate for somebody to delete someone else's thing, but maybe it's more fun to kind of see as it grows on on a in a collaborative space. Well, I was going to say if you um, if if people fill out the form individually in the PDF and then you're figuring out how you want to collate it um, after the fact, at least you've got the raw material and people aren't going to type over each other's stuff. So it would be a way to move fast on the getting the input um and then you can look into how to how to um collate it and tabulate it um and i would check out typeform because i think it might be a way to like take the input allow people to just you know not really understand the whole form and how it's going to end up but just answer a sequence of questions that can be triggered and divert you down to like sub levels of questions if you want um, and then have all the stuff in one system that then you can then tabulate um, yeah so yeah I think um, yeah it sounds like type form has what you're saying more flexibility and options than Google form yeah I think so I think so okay. I, I haven't plumbed it we've just used it a little bit but um, okay so here will be my plan I will try and I think a questionnaire is nicer than just handing people the chart and it will get us closer to what we need. So I'm going to, for a week, I'm going to try and put together the questionnaire. And if that's not working, like if I'm not liking the features and I think it's too complicated, then at least for these groups, I will, I will put out uh, just the Excel spreadsheet with some instructions. You know, if, if people want to fill it out, they can. Can I suggest in the, in the bill mode of, of like quick and dirty uh, um, that maybe you give us or at least me and Bill, I don't know who else is interested. <laughs> Security already gave it to Vincent, you know, give us that just so like you're, you're, you're seeing like what kind of input you're getting and what kind of length of question answers you're getting. And I'll, I'll do the type form thing again, you know, when you have it, but um, take advantage of our momentum in this meeting, at least among us few. Got it. Yep. <laughs> Work in parallel. In I love words, it. Agile, agile software is like how <laughs> how fast can you get something into the hands of the people that are going to use it? Yeah, but in a way that doesn't isn't annoying or like what is this? Yeah. Well, you got to trade on how much on. work does it work make for you, but the uh, you know. So so knowing we're going to end this call, put it in. Should I put it into Mattermost then into the Flotilla channel? Okay. Sure. Sure. I'll put it there. That way, everyone's got it and. Yeah, and I got to jump anyway because uh, it's, uh, it's time to go here. Okay. Thank <laughs> well, you, everyone. So that was fun for me. And oh, I yeah, have to thank fun. Zeke for prompting me to put it into a presentation. So thank you, Zeke, for that. It was very well done. Yeah. Well, adios, everyone. Have a good week. You too, Bill. Bye.
Thanks, See you around the internet. Bye, everyone. Yeah, Wendy, loved the presentation. Yeah. Um, and I was like, e e zoom in on the framework. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> well, it was when you got to the framework that I like, I DM'd Wendy saying, will you share a copy of this? Because I want to go look closer than I can yeah. on the screen. And, I, and then <laughs> and you shared it, which I still want to do. Um, yeah. Um, I hope I can help because um, I, I, I feel like there's there's what one of the challenges that i'm seeing too is like it's um it's it may be you know a, a type form might help do this but in in other ways in sort of presenting the concept i think it's it's simpler and more essential than it looks and you know how can we help you, you know, distill it to like something that people will get and respond to, you know, easily and quickly. Um, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very, I, very that's cool. what, why I think it's so nice to hear everyone's excitement because that's what I was thinking. Like, oh, I think I finally found a way that's simple enough and yet provides enough framework at the same time to hold all the complexity. Like, how is that possible? But this seems to be working so far. So we'll just keep, I, I'm very much in that spot. Thank you for articulating that, Michael, because that's the key, right? If people find it easy to use, and yet it somehow becomes a repository for the complexity of what we're all trying to deal with, we have, this is, this is great, right? So, um, and I'm sure, and I'm, hope it'll change over time. And I hope that we'll morph it and it will grow, right? It's so I don't by any means think even if we get to something we're, that we're excited about, that it's done. <laughs> I think this is gonna be growing for a while. If we're onto something, it should morph and change and get better over time as we use it. Um, and and um, that's even more exciting to me, so. Cool. Yay, thanks yeah. everyone. And I, th I, think, I think also that, that thinking of the notion of of this is like a, a a not sexy sounding word, but you know, templatization of this kind of idea of extracting this kind of gridable, tabulatable information from groups of people who are using different platforms, so that you know you can sort of see, oh well, you know, we're you know weak on economic expertise here and heavy on this kind of actual practice here but on this other platform there's this this group of people who wait in a different way and how can we bring those people together whether it's cta and flotilla or you know whatever you know yeah and, and i think the exciting part too is there's so many people who um who who are in key spots who see, who are seeing for themselves some of, so I, I'm hearing more and more in the last six months. Oh, I see how everyone's connected. I'm waiting for everyone else to figure it out. Yeah. Why are we waiting for everyone else to figure it out? Like we got to have a place where the people who see it, put it <laughs> so, so that we, we can connect faster. So to your point, like maybe there's two organizations that could be collaborating beautifully together and it takes them another year to figure out how they collaborate. And, and that's what I, it's not that that's bad. That's great but I just want it to happen faster, sure. <laughs> you know? And, and, there, and there are 433, right? V Vincent, I don't know if you, did you share the um, um, Ollie's presentation that you shared with me with Wendy? Um, no, but I definitely will. I'll share yeah, it. Yeah. And I, I think I shared it with you, Stacy and Zeke. We maybe, yeah, if, you know, sticking a link in the chat, I, I think it's really, really helpful to think about um, how many entities there are with the right mindset about this stuff, but all the things that keep them apart. And, and Ali Bream McIntosh did this presentation, kind of an academic presentation about all the things that keep us from collaborating. Um, and, you know, doesn't, doesn't really have the solution, but, you know, certainly talking about how we might address that because it's not for lack of, of desire. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, and, I, and, and to those ends, uh, you know, the ideal 
um, expression, I think, or ideal ripple effect, maybe it's a better term, of, of a chart or grid or tapestry like this, is that as a community, people can start looking at what is an essential component a framework, a platform, a tool, an app that needs to be developed more as a priority to enable all the other things that are happening. It'll be easier for people to see um, and agree together, I think, on what needs to come first, right? And then I think there are other great tools out there like matrices and things like that to help people make decisions. And we were we were talking a little bit about that on uh, uh, earlier this week, but I just, I, I right, it's, it's, it helps each individual sense make and it helps a community sense make, whatever that means for that community, right? And so I think it, at its best, it's gonna really start to bring things into focus either, wow, we may all be working on different pieces, but right now, if we all combine efforts towards this one piece, it's gonna enable everything we're trying to do. And right now that's very hard to see. Can somebody put the chat in the Mattermost? I don't know how to do it or I would. <laughs> and, um, do you know, um, Stacy, that if you if you click the three dots in the corner, you'll save a copy of it too. And I'll never find it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, it actually puts it in a titled folder. Um, so if I you try. Search flotilla, then you'll see your flotilla. Oh, okay. I'll try that. I'll try. I did. Cool. Yeah, and Stacy, I've also been um, working. I, I I don't feel like I'm 100% happy with it yet, but I've been working on the like Trove event page. Like this week, have made like some really big updates in preparation for a conference that's going to be on the platform. Um, and so now like on the event page, uh, I'm like kind of making it easier to like collaborate on this page for like the event repository. So this is today's event. And I put like, for example, this was like an image I took while Wendy um, was talking that I wanted to like upload. So it's like here attached to the context of this event. Um, and then these are all the links that were shared in the, in the chat. Um, and then I have also my like personal notes on the event here, but we could also then like add like collaborative notes. Um, so this is something that, yeah, working on making it a lot easier to make this like a collaborative process um, as like a way to store the repository of all the information. Thank you. So I put the link if you wanna explore, but the one thing that I haven't actually done is like right now, there's a lot of Trove events which have the, the Zoom chats, but I'm curious, like, do you guys actually ever go back to the Zoom chats? And like, if so, do you, why? Because um, I actually haven't made it so you can like see the chat. I just kind of know that it's valuable to keep them. But like, yeah, I'm curious, like, do we not go back to the chats because it's just like a text file? Like, would we go back to them if it was easier? Or like, do we not go back to them for certain reasons? Ooh. So as, as the least tech savvy person here, I go back to them to find the links that I want to look into further. So you're not clicking on things in the chat as the discussion's happening. You use the, okay, you use the repository to, to find those links later. You trust that they'll be there. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I'm like frantically trying to click on stuff during the chat, like, and 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 have those tabs open and then of course later forget where they came from and why i have them open right yeah and i need to focus <laughs> on what's happening here to like get caught up and then yeah. i need i'm separate to go slow um for me i tend not to go back because it's like you know cleaning the grout in my shower that's kind of you know <laughs> it's like it's something that it stares at me every day and i really want to do but like never becomes a priority. That's the way it feels. And I think because it's just not fun and it's a lot of sense making. And even when I get this stuff, I don't know where to put it. I don't have anything to put. I don't have anything to, I don't have, and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? Like it's, I don't have a place to sense make it. So it's just another list of links. 
Um, so unless it really applies to something I'm doing right now, it's hard for me to feel motivated around going back to it. And then of course, when it, when those links do apply to my life right now, I've forgotten that they were ever there, you know, and that's the, you know, and I, I do save them with the intent to break them down into, into smaller kernels, like, you know, and I, I wish they were searchable. You know, I want to see like there are times when I want to say I'd like to see all the stuff that, you know, all the links that Wendy posted in the last few flotillas and all the stuff that Ken Homer commented in the OGM during this period, because I remember there was some good stuff you know, or specifically all the Jerry's brain links, you know, or whatever. Um, and, and I wish there was that. So I want to save the chat so I can feed them into that machine, which is, you know, Catabot plus, you know, I guess, um, with like more attributions and then, you know, and then tag, I'd love for the group to be able to incrementally add tags to things you know, if things were tagged only as they intrinsically are with timestamp and and personal attribution, and then the text were searchable, then you could go on to saying like, you know, this comment was regarding economics, you know, this was regarding- um, Put them in the grid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put them in the, uh, weave them to, into the tapestry. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I, if it were me, Vincent, looking forward to what I think is coming, the fact that you've gotten to a point where you can scrape all the links and at least they're in one spot and is really valuable. If there's only a handful, that's super easy, right? I could review them for myself and make sense of them. If there's a lot of them, then it's almost like an extra service to have an archivist kind of person put them, you know, put them, tag them and you know, um, and, and whether it's, you know, as part of the tapestry or just for that community or both, right? It's so that the community can make more sense of them going forward. I, I actually think that becomes incredibly valuable, especially if, if it's, there's some sense making around it. Yeah. And there, yeah. And there's definitely some like automated tagging, but yeah, I think it requires like <laughs> some manual, you know, gardening. Uh, it's always going to. And so like, these are the links from today's chat up to like a certain point. And um, so, yeah, like I've been working on making it easier to like just click to edit and then like to add tags or to, you know, add your own title or description. Um, and like some of them, you know, like Twitter links don't work. So you would have to like manually kind of curate some of them. Um, or like there are certain things where you might want to also like be like, oh, this is like a Zoom link or like this is something I sent to someone in like a private message and you want to make it private. So there's also like, there's there's the necessity of having an additional layer um, over just the bulk import, I think. So that's kind of, I've been like taking on that role. And then like, I, if I add anything into an event, I've been deleting anything that shouldn't be there and like learning the patterns of like, oh, okay. Like these are the things that people usually share in, in, the Zoom chats, right? Um, but yeah, the next step is like, if it's if it's just as easy or easier to add something not in the Zoom chat, like for example, in the OGM calls, we were putting links inside of the Mattermost for some, uh, for a time, um, right? So there, there, there also are ways to use tools with alongside Zoom instead of trying to like fit into Zoom's limitations. So like, um, you know, like, I mean, I would love, yeah, like to get to a point where I, it's faster for me to like add a link onto the event page, which I have like side by side of Zoom and then be able to add the tags and hit submit um, and even like share it with people. Like if someone's like, oh, I really want this. I can be like, okay, let me tag you with it. So it shows up in your home yeah. for later, right? So we are also helping each other manage the complexity and not just like me, 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 me. Um. Vincent, I just, I noticed that that sounds great. And I noticed looking at the form that you were showing there, um, 
I, I don't think I saw this, but I wondered if there's a way, okay, like, you know, you go, you go, you know, we go to this flotilla, um, you know, the, the event, this, this flotilla call on Trove, and one of the links is something that we want to share with other people who aren't on Trove, say, tweet it out or God forbid, post it on Facebook or, you know, whatever it is, wherever we would want to put it. Um, is there a way to share out um, from, from that event? And, and I suppose that gets to, to also, you know, conventions of permissions to share different stuff um, that, you know, would have to pop up and say, you're sharing something that is in a private group blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Um, do you mean share, like share a single link or like share all the links or like share the whole event page? Oh, well, I meant specifically share a particular link, um, which obviously you can just copy the link and share it as you would otherwise. But I was wondering if like, you know, sharing, I mean, thinking about like if something's all tagged up and described on Trove, you're sharing more than a link, you're sharing like metadata that has been entered. And like, if you shared that to Factor or, you know, true.net or, you know, th those are the kinds of things that I can imagine we would want to, um, and, and, and also be able to have it link back, you know, see this on Trove versus just get the link and go, you know, somewhere else. Um, I mean, yeah, something to talk about, but no, that's really interesting. I haven't even thought about the like, by Wendy, the sh the sharing component. Um, but like, this is um, I was actually like kind of curious when you mentioned like I want to see all the brain links. So these are like the brain links that are in Trove, and on each one of these links, you could either copy the link to your clipboard and then you know just share it, or you could open it in a new tab. Um, or you can actually share it like on email or something or Facebook mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think what you're saying is maybe you want to say like, you know, shared into like this event um, in Trove with like the event link. So you have like a backlink to like the context of where it came from. Right, right. Yeah. Which is, which could be really cool. Yeah. Which is, I mean, you know, it's it's one of the, I think, appealing features of Twitter is like if something comes out of a conversation, um, bye, Zeke. <laughs> um, if hey, something come... Good to see you all again. Good to see you. Have a great weekend. Cheers. You. Um, if you, uh, you know, if somebody shared something in the context of a conversation, there are lots of responses to it. You know, you're 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 pulled back into that context um, if you want to be. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess there's a whole there's a whole realm of the design of like engagement or interaction um, comments. Like, yeah, like the biggest part of Twitter is like being able to write comments on other people's tweets and, and have the threads. And so that is definitely a, like an, a possibility and an option for, for Trove. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very hesitant to just yeah. incorporate it without thinking about it too much, like without thinking about it, right? Like yeah, I yeah. think there sure. is some, um, some things about comments. It's like, it's a comment system just you know, add comments, but then in the other, then in the other way, I like look at Facebook and like, there's this like incredible post by Daniel Schmockenberger and there's 195 comments. And I'm like, am I going to have to read through all of these? And also I already looked through all of them and now there's new ones. And now I have to like <laughs> go through them again. And so like, I've, I've been wishing for like, also to have like filters on comments, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. right. Or like be able to put a comment type uh, right, like this is a, an argument that I want people to respond to, or this is like I want to just add a link here, or um, right. There's different like types of comments you might want to add. So that's something I've been thinking about is before incorporating comments, like 
yeah, like maybe what, what would it look like if we were to have a comment system that could handle that, like the scale and complexity that comes with like millions of people being able to be in one room at once, which doesn't happen in the real world. Yeah, yeah. And, and also controls, I mean, this is something that, you know, we've got on, on factor, like, you know, being able to say, um, only people in this group can comment on this, or there are no comments on this, or, you know, those kinds of, of things. Um, so that, you know, you have the choice between letting some people observe a conversation going on among a limited number of people. So it's sort of like you're attending a panel discussion versus, you know, wide open, anybody, anywhere can say whatever they want and spam everyone or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What to talk about. <laughs> I'm gonna save the chat again because I saved it like halfway through. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me join. <laughs> See you Thanks again. For joining. Thanks. See you. Bye. I'll, I'll... See you too.